Hi everybody and uh, welcome to our second episode of Up the Act with Jack. That is myself of course. Um, thank you to everybody who watched last uh, the last episode we had which was with our chairman Bill. If you haven't had a chance yet please do and go and watch it. In the meantime give our Facebook and YouTube pages some follows and subscribes. That'll be fantastic and uh, on our second episode this week as you can see we've got uh, another familiar face of acts in Mr Daniel Burroughs. So welcome Daniel. Hello thank you Jack. Very happy to be here. Thank you. That's uh, it's always great to hear on the, on our lucrative new talk show that we're having here. So this uh, should be some fun. Um, uh, Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> eat her art and <laughs> that's the one. But uh, we'll get straight into it, Daniel. Get you uh, get you going, and uh, and we'll see what comes about. So first question I've got for you is again very similar to the one with Bill, but is that why act? Why act for you? What what made you join? Well, um, I had done some public speaking in work and also some kind of extracurricular projects that I've worked on and I quite liked that. Um, so I wanted to do something creative on, in my spare time that involved some kind of performance or some kind of um, just some kind of activity that put me into the community. Yeah. And um, so I googled amateur dramatics in Northampton and I think Abbey Community Theatre was at the top of the Google search or very near the top and um, so it was very easy to find so I clicked on it and um, I noticed that there was a, an image there that was requesting um, you know support in helping the group um, you know they were looking for obviously actors, directors, people to help backstage, crew, um, but also web designers. So at that point, I didn't actually know if I could act. I didn't know if I could learn lines. I just didn't know if I physically had that skill because I'd never done that bit before. But like I say, um, I'd kind of done public speaking and enjoyed that. So um, I thought that if I could maybe join ACT on the premise of looking at after their website, because that was the job that I was doing at the time, um, then maybe I could kind of segue into the acting at some point much further down the line. You know, I just thought I'd maybe start looking at their website, but then go to a few meetings, kind of sit backstage, chat with some people, go and see some shows. And it wasn't far from where I lived. So um, I thought that that's, that's what would happen, mm. which, you know, was completely, <laughs> my plans were spoiled from the start because within weeks I found myself rehearsing for the panto for that, for that same year. So, um, so they, they dragged me to the forefront, um, although it was a, it was a chorus uh, part, I was in the chorus, uh, because again, I had no idea if I could actually do this. So I fixed the website for them and then I kind of, on a, a strange blue beret and was a market person, a village town folk for um, Sleeping Badly, it was called. Um, and I think I had two lines um, and that was it. But um, that was the start of it all. That's why I go going. No, I think, um, you know, it's a great way to get going. And I think for myself as well, obviously, as you know, act, it, it kind of just drags you in. It, from from day one, like when I joined and when when Poppy joined, we you know we just jumped straight in and and it was nice and easy though. It was very welcoming and and that's the great aspect mm -hmm. of our group from the start. And mm -hmm. I think you know you can clearly see that happen with yourself that you know you go for one thing, but all of a sudden you can get dragged in just by the way that it brings you together and you, the whole and feeling of it and and yeah, all of a sudden you're saying yeah, sure I'll do that, yeah I'll do that and it's and it's great and I think that's a great way for. And, and brilliant way you started. And, you know, as you say, like, you know, it was probably moving on to one of my next questions was why theatre for yourself? But, you know, you explain that kind of in a way that it was obviously for yourself, you'd done certain things, but you wanted to find a way to do an activity. And, and you know what, I'll, I'll agree. I think it's one of the best things to do in that, in that atmosphere. I mean, not necessarily then why theatre, but like, has theatre always been something for you has there always been a love there or is it just yeah. did it come about well um when i was a very small boy literally 200 years ago <laughs> uh, my mum would take us to the local community theater uh, for panto my sister and i 
and it was a small tiny community center probably sat about maybe not even probably about 50 people honestly it was tiny and a really small stage but every christmas they did panto and um so i would go along to that and that was my first kind of introduction to theater and was just drawn into the world of it the kind of the world of make believe the world of the creation of an, of a completely new uh universe a different life that the people on the stage were creating for you and you know being part of something being sat in an audience all experiencing the same event and the same feelings you know the same um actions that that are happening on stage you know to feel that kind of collective um you know tension collective humor everything that the audience is feeling is is something that is a very unique experience no I, uh, a bit yeah. like you know going to the cinema now yeah no i completely agree um, with you. so i was um so that was my kind of introduction and even at that small age i was also really curious about what's happening backstage and behind the scenes and um you know i've always kind of grown up wanting to know how it all works. Um, as I got older, I went to see other shows, different, my, my tastes were broadened, so ballet, uh, musicals, um, plays, all sorts of things. And I've just kind of, and the, but the same interests have kind of stuck with me, that kind of interest of being um, kind of, being absorbed into this life that's happening on stage, that's completely, um, removed from anything else that you might be experiencing during that day you know it's, you, you just become privy to a whole new exciting world um and i and i like and now i'm able to partake in that so it's really exciting for me as an actor but also as someone who's worked behind the scenes i can kind of quench that kind of thirst of wanting to know how it all works as well mm. with all the ropes behind stage and the props and the scenery and you know, I've worn those cans and some people and people talking in my head saying, switch the lights out, switch the lights out. And I've, you know, switched the lights out at the wrong time, <laughs> that, that sort of thing. And so being an act has kind of enabled me, it's almost like the peak of my interest, if you like, in terms of, well, a whole lifetime worth of theatre experience. Um, and I just don't think there's anything like it. And I recently went back home actually a few months ago um, and the that community center has now been knocked down and I think they're going to build some houses on top and I just think that's really sad for mm. the children that are now growing up in that area which is you know it's it's not an affluent area they probably can't afford to go to the um, theater in the center of town because you know the prices can be really quite high um, and so they won't grow up with that kind of community theatre which I think is really important because it's so accessible to everybody I mean if you look at ACT you know the tickets are like eight pounds and you get a cup of tea in the interval so you know I just think that it, it plays a really important part in um, in the community. No I completely agree with you I think from my experience as well I think the aspects of being able to express yourself is massive in theatre and I think for those you know you know kids and, and young adults who maybe struggle to as I say express themselves fully and don't really know their what they are you know their personality they don't really know who they are I think theatre can definitely bring that out of you and being able to do that from such a young age is is, is fantastic and I completely agree without you know that the aspect of being able to go and do that yes not everyone can always go to the theater and afford to go to the theater constantly but things like you know like act local community theaters who put on little shows but they're great and they're enjoyable and they're funny or they can be really interesting and keep you keep you thinking all the time and they're brilliant in their own way and i just think that it helps so many people show who they really are and express themselves and i think you know as you say it's it's a shame that it's not you know that one that you had as a kid isn't there anymore and but there are places like that act yeah. around and they are always going to be because there's a lot of people who just want to do that so it's, it is great to hear from that angle of course um 
what I would want to know from you as well is more within, sorry, with more within apps, what sort of aspirations do you have for it for yourself or for the group as a whole? But, you know, what aspirations do you see going forward that you'd really want to cement down? I just want to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in terms of acting and directing, um, the only aspirations I have really is to is to do everything. <laughs> it sounds like a pretty big aspiration, but I just want to broaden the interest that I've that I've kind of garnered in acting over the last five years that I've been in act. You know, I want to just broaden the scope of my abilities. I'd really like to do to, to try different forms of theatre. You know, I'd like to do a Shakespeare. Um, I'd like to do outdoor theatre. Um, I would definitely like to direct something yeah. in the future. But at the moment, I'm just having too much fun on the stage. I mean, there have been a few opportunities come up um, or where I've been invited to um, direct something. But at the moment, um, I'm just having too much fun on stage and I just love it so much. I know that I would love, like, like directing, but there's just nothing like going out on stage and just being, you know, <laughs> in that position with that really hot light on you and like a hundred faces staring up at you, waiting for you to do something. <laughs> yeah. it is. Um, and um, I mean, and, and just going back to your point earlier about how inclusive ACT is, um, that is the, the, the joy of ACT, is that literally anybody can do anything they want if, if they want. So, you know, you can come in and direct something if you want to. You can, you can, do, you can play any part in, in, the, in the production. Um, so I definitely want to do some acting, but just maybe not quite yet. Um, but like I say, definitely kind of broaden my scope in terms of perform type of performances that I want to do. Um, so definitely kind of like I said, outdoor Shakespeare. I'd like to do something in the round. Um, we did a play called A Kiss on the Bottom um, about three or four years ago now. And, uh, and we performed it in the round at the Abbey Centre. And um, now I wasn't in it, obviously, but um, I would have loved to have been in it. It was an all female cast, so I, I couldn't. But, um, but just to be that close to the audience, literally seeing the whites of their eyes, I just think would be a really exciting um, thing to do. No, I completely um, agree. I kind of like surprising people. That's, that's kind of where it comes out of. Yeah, that's where that's kind of where the heart of it is for me, is surprising people, doing something unexpected. I like that. I like surprising people. Mm. So that's what motivates me to get into the, all the different characters that I've done. No, no, I, I think it's, uh, it, as you say, surprising people is, is always fantastic. And, <laughs> and obviously things like names in pantos are always the most surprising. Just, you know, if people don't know who you're supposed to be, or they don't know who you're supposed to be playing and then just coming out like that is obviously uh, <laughs> one of the biggest you can do. They're always fantastic. And, but I agree with you. I think like the aspect of being able to be really involved with people, as you say, it's not for everyone, but I think when you can have that sort of participation with the audience in a bit more, you know, you actually go up to them, you can actually almost have a conversation with someone. It's just something about that where it feels so inclusive and so much fun that you're this different person, but they could know you, mm -hmm. but it's, it's still, yeah. you're still in that character. It's just, the great inclusive fun way um so you know that would be that would be absolutely fantastic i completely agree with you i think essentially doing lots of different types of plays is is always something enjoyable you know not again not everyone's going to enjoy them not everyone will get along with shakespeare because of the way you have to speak and the beat and all of that mm. aspect. i i've struggled with it in the past still enjoyed it but it's it's different whereas some people would prefer to do outright comedies or really get involved in pantos or someone would like a farce or so on and so forth but i think it's uh, it'd be a great idea for for acts going forward you know to be able to do these different plays put them on get these different characters out of people see what they're made of and then in, you know help the um help the audience enjoy different types of theater which will be fantastic um mm. Moving on to a little bit of a different topic then. You kind of said when you came in, obviously the website was already there, but they were looking for someone to help with it. What did you 
necessarily do? What, what was it? What was it that you came in and did with the website? <laughs> um, right. Well, when I started um, the website, it was just one page that was just an image, one image that literally just had kind of. It was kind of like a recruitment image, and it was my friend Nikki Bunting um, who was looking after the website at the time, and she just she just didn't have the time to kind of um, release its full potential, if you like, um, in the same way that I could, because that was my job. <laughs> you yeah. know, that was my job at the time. So I came in and I kind of rebranded the whole, I gave the branding everything. to the website. Um, <laughs> everything. Um, I picked a couple of colors. Yellow is there to represent friendliness because that I think is one of the core elements of ACT. It's, it's the attribute that is close to its, closest to its heart. It's, it's what it prides itself on. Yeah. After being there for five years, I can completely see why. It is the friendliest bunch of people. Um, and the blue represents creativity. So those are the colours that I chose for the website. I just did a logo that, I mean, there was, there was no identity for the group. You know, it'd been running for about 30 odd years and there were lots of members. There was about 30 members, I think, something like that. Um, but there was no kind of collective identity um, brand or branding of, of, some, of any kind. There was no logo. And I think that audiences, they kind of look, for representation in most things that they do. If they're shopping, if they're going to a shop, they look for branding. It's the same, you know, when they go to a website, they like to know that the website is genuine, blah, blah, blah. So they kind of look for those kind of markers. I did that and I took photos of the members because I thought that was a really great way to open up the group to the community was to um, show who was actually taking part and for, for the members to put a little, description against their photo mm -hmm. um, just to kind of encourage outs, people like outside to kind of maybe be curious about the group and hopefully join themselves yeah. um, and to show the world how friendly we all were um, and how welcoming we all were so that's what I did uh, so I built a, a membership page um, I put information on there about our um, past productions so that it's kind of now set in stone so that nobody can wonder if we ever did that play back in 1991 you, know, you know we've got all of that now recorded and um, yeah it's not over complicated you know it's it's fairly straightforward website but um, but that's what I did so I did a lot of so I did some graphic design again. That's kind of what I do. And I also opened up um, some social media. They, there was already a Facebook page, but again, it kind of had limited reach. So I um, spent a lot of time posting to Facebook and also Twitter. I created a Twitter account. Well, I was going to say that kind of moves on to, to where I wanted to go next with it. Obviously, like, as you say, obviously, social medias were then sort of forward and posted a bit more. In terms of sort of the, have you really seen much influence from it? Has it influenced sort of people in that way that's been different than anything else that ACT has done before? What sort of influence have you seen from the social media? Well, definitely we are getting so many more hits than the Facebook page ever, ever got. Um, what I tend to do is whenever we have a show, I'll run a, a sort of marketing campaign, if you like, a publicity campaign with publicity shots. Um, and graphics to promote the show over the course of I don't know, eight to ten weeks before curtain up. And some of those images, you know, they're being viewed by like eight, nine hundred people because those are the stats that Facebook tells me. So I know that for a fact. I lie. Um, so there is so much more traction now on the Facebook. And if we're getting viewed by that many people, um, you know, that must have an impact on um, who's walking through the doors and who's um, we putting on seats. Um, and through, I mean, anecdotally, um, I know that some long-term members have said that there are definitely new people that they haven't seen before coming through the doors. Because obviously there are, we have like this really great core audience that are very loyal to us. 
and have come to see everything that we've done over a long time. Um, and the, the longer term members, they know those people by face and by name, um, some of them. And um, so to see brand new faces coming in that they haven't seen in quantities that they haven't noticed before, I just think goes to show that we are definitely had more of an impact on the community than we, than we ever used to. Um, really good. And also, I mean, one of the other things that I introduced was online, um, online ticketing, um, yeah. which we do through PayPal. And that has grown kind of exponentially over the last, I think it's been on there for about three years now. You know, I think for the first show, we sold something like 15 tickets for the first online performance. But then on a more recent panto, like over, over two thirds or something like that of tickets were bought online. Yeah, you know, I think it's so, um, quite normal now really, isn't it? In all yeah, lives. exactly, people expect it now. So. Um, yeah. So I think that that has really helped also to kind of get more ticket sales there and then um, rather than wait, you know, before customers or our audience members had to contact a, uh, one of the members to buy tickets. And that, there's a delay in that, isn't there? There's a delay in wanting mm. to decide that you're going to go and see the show to then actually buying tickets. And in that delay, the person can change their mind. <laughs> the thing with the online booking is that people can, can book tickets straight away and, um, and then we have the numbers. So that's really good for the group because ultimately, you know, we're non-profit making. So we just, ticket money goes back into looking after ACT. It goes back into looking after the um, Abbey Community um, Center, uh, Abbey Community Center. It is. <laughs> Yeah, it just didn't sound right. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, it enables us to kind of, you know, give away free teas, you know, all that sort of thing. So, yeah. you know, the audience benefits at the end of the day. So, um, so I'm really pleased with how things have progressed. Um, and now, of course, you know, yourself and Poppy have come along and we now have a YouTube channel. So let's see where that goes. Yeah, well, exactly that. I mean, I think fingers crossed with the way it's going to go forward, hopefully. We, it won't just be this type of things, you know, aspect of the shows, little snippets of it, loads of things we could potentially introduce on there and really start to, to reach a different kind of audience than we probably have before, whilst obviously keeping the original style. But it, yeah, as you say, the, the reach is, is a lot more widely available now, which is, of course, fantastic. A um, little quick question for you. Just really quickly answer from you as well, if that's all right. Just future play that you'd like to either direct or star in something you'd really want to do i would really like the first thing that comes to my mind that i'd really like to perform in which is not likely to happen at the abbey center is the rocky horror show and i would ah. love to play frankenfurter no oh, there we go that would I'm, I'm not gonna lie that would be incredible very very difficult but uh, no i can definitely see you doing that so uh, you never know fingers crossed on that one <laughs> Would yes. be amazing. Not, not a typical show, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? You never know these days. Um, again, going back a bit more to do with sort of the boosting of acts and 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 where we obviously want to go. We've kind of discussed how we think that's the social media and the website and and everything we're doing at the moment is going to really boost it. But then for people who might see the social media or see the the YouTube or whatever it be, the website, why would you say to them to come and watch us over, not necessarily over other people, but why come and watch Acts as a whole? I think that the fact that we are all such a friendly bunch and we're all good mates, I think that comes across in our performances, which I think puts, it means that we put on some really good shows. Yeah. Um, we don't have any drama queens. We don't have um you know there's no hierarchy um we just we just love putting on shows and i think that really comes across in the performances um and i think our shows are really entertaining um we i think we are we place ourselves in a nice little niche in northampton whereby in northampton amateur dramatics um on the amateur dramatic scene in that we do these really great murder mysteries yeah. and um, 
that are whodunits. So either you find out who has done the deed or the audience has to actually guess themselves who has done the deed. Um, and I think that we're very good at hosting those events, yeah. those kind of performances. Um, and of course the panto, whereby, you know, for very affordable um, cost, you can bring the whole family to see a really good quality panto yeah. in really good facilities. I mean, that's a pretty big stage that we've got. Um, and, you know, and we can fit like, what, 200 people or something like that in the auditorium? And you get a free cup of tea in the interval. <laughs> That's it. Ticket sold. <laughs> Ticket sold. <laughs> nice and easy. I, just think it, I think it's a really great night out. Um, and like I say, we. Um, I just think that we are really relatable to our audience. We know who our audience is, and so we can kind of really relate to them, and we can we can kind of pitch our performances to what they what they like. Yeah. So that's why I would say people should come and see us. I, um, I can obviously strongly back that up in, in my estimation of obviously the from when we first we, we first walked in me and Poppy the quality was clear from day one it, it wasn't an aspect where we kind of walked in and ummed and ahed at whether or not it's going to be the right kind of quality we didn't um and ah that it's just it's too well sort of as you say like the hierarchy's there and it's it's really yeah. well set and you have to do everything at the right time and stuff and it's but it, it's just such a good mixture of it that it's it's great fun. At the same time, we we are serious and we want to put on the show, but the quality of acting is there. At the same time, people want to learn and we'll learn off each other. We're all there to help each other, and some people are better at some things than the others, but are willing, of course, to of course help everyone to to better themselves. And I think from that aspect, from when I came in, it, it was very clear from day one, and I'll definitely back that up for for people who want to come and watch us. The quality is going to be there, but you're going to enjoy yourself. Um, it's yeah. going to be nice. It's going to be friendly. And you get a cup of tea for free. Uh -huh. That's it. Um, <laughs> I'll be sold. <laughs> but um, um, but I, I just want to make the point of that we do really, I mean, we really care about our performance. I mean, I don't know. We take it seriously but not, we, we don't take ourselves seriously, mm. but we really want to put on a good show for the audience. And that is, that is the prime objective, is to get a show that is of outstanding quality on the night. Um, so, you know, I just want to make that point that, yeah, we all get on as, as friends, we all have a great time, but, you know, we do, we are serious about putting on a good show. Um, and again, I think that's something that comes through. Also, great wardrobe department. I mean, thanks to Lynn, yeah. we've got some great costumes. We go all out on the sets. You know, we did a farce a few, a year or so ago. Uh, Don't get your vicars in a twist, of course, typical farce title. Um, we had like five different doors on, on stage. Um, we had a staircase, we had an understairs cupboard. We had a picture that had to automatically fall off the wall, you know, it was a really high production. Yeah. Um, the set was outstanding. It was a massive set. set. Um, all these kind of um, these kind of little things really raised the bar, and I think that that's what makes it a good night. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think you know it, it is fantastic. Uh, again, from my experience coming in, the the set design is all out. The you know um, on the play that we were due to do before we were obviously called off during this time yeah um you know the costume aspect wasn't truly there for myself but for others it was outstanding and it just looked so much fun um so i definitely back back that up for sure mm -hmm. um nice and final question for you daniel really quick one whilst we're just finishing up here not just in acts but your favorite play of all time do you know what it is i'm a bit boring in as much as i don't have like one favorite of anything okay. <laughs> um but i like different things for di for different reasons i read one one of my favorite ballets is uh, matthew bourne swan lake okay. yeah. that literally just really kind of tore my heart out of my chest and they stamped all over it on stage it was one <laughs> of those experiences really like spy monkey they're kind of like a clowning kind of um comedy um troupe 
they've had me in absolute hysterics, um, very kind of hilarious physical comedy. Those are the kind of things that I that I would yeah. I would say that would be my favourite list. Um, <laughs> things that raise my spirits. Um, don't get me wrong, love a really thought provoking play, but in terms of what stays on my memory, it's mostly the kind of uplifting stuff that really kind yeah. of like really I feel really deeply. So maybe those two things. No, I think um, in all honesty, you know, I've probably got a very similar aspect in that. For me, play gone wrong will always be one of the best oh, things yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Just <laughs> uh, that sort of slapstick humour, something about it, incredibly difficult to do. Yeah. Very, very well done to anybody who obviously pulls it off. But no, I, I agree with you there. I think that side of things is is outstanding. Um, well, thank you very much, Before Daniel. Go. Sorry, go Before on. I just want to point out something. I don't know if anybody, if you can make out, but, and I want to just point this out for my friends and family that might be watching this. I, I've got a tattoo here, you'll see, hmm. which is a new addition, <clears throat> but it isn't a real tattoo. So I just want to point out in my family and my friends, my mum's like, oh my God, he's got a tattoo. When did he bloody well get that? <laughs> it's fake. It's a, I've been doing some filming today for a different theatre group. Um, and um, and I needed a tattoo, so I just wanted to point that out. Well, there you go. To everyone who was wondering, it is not real. <laughs> Front news of the uh, papers tomorrow. It's a fake tattoo. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you very much, Daniel. It's been fantastic speaking to you and getting to know obviously all the ins and outs of of yourself and act and what's been going on through the years. So uh, so yeah, thank you very much um, for coming on and speaking to me today. It's been great. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Jack. Well, uh, yeah, thank you for everybody who watches this um, and we hope you enjoyed it again. If we don't do another one and we're not on before the uh, before Christmas, we hope everyone has a, a wonderful Christmas with their family that they can get to see this year. Um, and, uh, and yeah, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you very much. Good night.